Hi, I am Imru Susan from AppScot. Today we are going to talk about what is auto backup and how does it work in Stash. Then we'll show a quick demo how auto backup is working. Then we'll try to answer some commonly asked questions. Okay, let's get it started. So what is auto backup? Uh, the short answer is it's a common template for backup. That's mean you can specify template to take backup of different thing. Why do you need this? Assume a situation where you have 20, 30 or more workloads. Some of them deployment, some of them stateful set or other things. So you want to take backup them. Now in workload backup model, in order to backup those workloads, you have to create a repository and a backup configuration for each of the workloads. So for, for 30 workloads, you have to create 30 repository and a 30 backup configuration. So this is actually not the good user experience. So we have to, uh, in order to solve this problem, we have come up with this auto backup. There is another use case. Uh, assume that you are a admin of a cluster and you want to pre-configure backup for your customer. You give different namespace for your different customer. So you want to set up a backup model for this customer and the customer don't have to worry about how to backup, how to create the backup configuration, et cetera. They just need to add few annotation their workload to start the backup. Okay, so what kind of resource you can backup using this auto backup? Okay, you can backup all workloads. I mean, all deployments, demo set, all of them with only a single backup template. Then you can uh, backup all similar type of database with only single template. I mean, you can create a template for Postgres database. So you can take backup of all the Postgres database of your cluster using this single template. You can create another template to backup all the MySQL database on your cluster. Similarly, you can backup all the PVCs using a single template. This diagram is showing how this auto backup will work. Here, we have a CR called backup blueprint CR. This backup blueprint is the template. This actually specify which kind of things to backup and what should be template, uh, template for the repositories and backup configuration. Then we have to create a storage secret in each namespace where the backup will happen. Once you have created the storage secret and the backup blueprint, then you can just get the workload with some annotation. Then Stash will watch the workload. It sees there is some auto backup annotation it will get a repository and a backup configuration for it. If you create another workload, it will create repository and backup configuration, configuration for it too. Then rest of the backup process will work similarly as the workload backup. So you don't have to actually create the workload backup with the annotation. You can add the annotation uh, Later, using kubectl annotate or uh, you can use kubectl edit to add this annotation. It will immediately start configuring this backup. So let's check the real demo. Here I have created a cluster and I have installed a stash operator. 
now um, i am going to show you the second case where i want to back up, uh, configure a backup for my customer i have two customer customer one i want to give him name a name space called customer one let's create it customer one name space then i have another customer name customer two i want to give him name space customer two okay so we have created the name space for customer one and customer two let's create a new tab now here in the left side we'll watch the resources for customer one and in the right side we will watch the resources of customer two let's do it for both of them in the top terminal we will watch the ports of customer one and here we will watch the ports customer two here we will watch us for repositories here repository for customer one and repository for customer two here backup configuration for customer one and backup configuration for customer two and the finally we'll watch us for backup session for customer one and backup session for customer two so let's get back to the original terminal okay so we have created two names for our two customer. Now let's configure a backup. So at first we have to create a storage secret as we have seen in the uh, diagram. Uh, here I am going to use this AWS S3 bucket. Currently this is empty. And this is, uh, we are using a bucket called stash QA. So I have to create a secret to access this broken. Okay, so I have to create a secret in the customer one namespace. Another secret in the customer two namespace. As you can see, this secret contains the access key and uh, access key and the secret key of the AWS bucket it also contains another uh, credential called restrict password this is actually used to encrypt the backup data so now i will create a backup template backup blueprints here this backup blueprints here we are calling it backup workload backup blueprint because this will be used to take backup all kind of workload like deployment state full set demo set now here i have two part the first part there is a template for repository here i am using s3 bucket this stash qa then in the next part uh, i have a template for backup configuration uh, if you note that here in prefix section we have used some variable here we are using target name space, target kind, and target name. These variables are actually here to separate the uh, individual user's data into different directories of the bucket. So, for example, customer one uh, backup data will go in auto backup slash customer one name space. And then this will be further divided by workload kind. If the customer one has deployment stateful set demo set in his cluster and he configure backup for them then deployment 
backup will go auto backup customer one slash deployment and stateful set will go auto backup customer one stateful set directory finally we have further divided the backup data according the to workload names so deployment uh, one uh, backup is will store in a directory and deployment two will backup will store another directory okay let's create it uh, one thing to uh, notice one thing to notice that this backup blueprint is non name spaced that means once you created a backup blueprint you can access it from any namespace you want okay let's create the backup blueprint so we have created the backup blueprint so i have configured pre-configured backup for our customers now whenever the customer creates get its workload he just can start he add some annotation and the backup will start let's see i have a customer one this customer one has a stateful set and this is stateful set mounting two volume so data one and so data two this volume so we want uh, if this uh, customer want to take backup of this stateful set he just need to add this three annotation the first annotation is telling that we want to use template workload backup template to backup this stateful set and the second uh, annotation tells we want to take backup of these two directory source data one and source data two and the final annotation is telling that this is uh, the volume statues mount inside its sidecar this is actually the volume mounts of this stateful set so source data one is mounted in source data one directory source data two volume is mounted in source data two directory so here this is a source data one mount volume mounts and here is source data two volume mounts they are separated by comma uh, if we use uh, sub path then we can further add this sub path by another column since here we are not using any sub path so we can remove it okay let's get this triple set customer one so customer one if we go to this terminal we can see a repository and a backup configuration has been created automatically and this stateful set will start with stash init content stash sidecar here we can see the this part is starting with sidecar this will also uh, start with sidecar it will term get terminated and start with sidecar give it a second if we go back to this terminal if we check this backup configuration we'll see customer one yeah this backup configuration this schedule part we we, we are actually specified uh, in the this blueprint section the schedule part and this retention policy and this retention policy rest of the thing has been automatically populated by stash uh, here uh, this target ref specify the stateful set itself and this path actually specifying the path we have specified specified in this annotation and this this volume mount is denoting the volume we have specified in this volume mount annotation if we check the repository we can see similar thing this repository has been populated by the uh, respective data we had uh, provided in the backup blueprint template 
Note that this variable has been now resolved and uh, replaced by this respective data. So namespace has been replaced by customer one. The target kind has been replaced by stateful set and target name has been replaced by the stateful set itself, stateful set name. So let's go back to this terminal. We can see a backup already running. Let's give it some few time, few minutes. Okay, let's start another customer backup. So here we have another customer. This customer actually have a deployment. This deployment mounting to config map in so data one and so data two directories. So it is mounting to config map. So if he want to take backup of this uh, deployment, he have to add uh, those three annotation. Here we are similarly we are specifying that we want to take backup of this so data one and so data two, and then uh, the volume mounts we have mount here. Let's create it. So we are now creating for customer two. So customer two, here a repository has been created for customer two and a backup configuration has been created. Let's check it. QFCTL get backup configuration for customer two. So if you can check uh, now, this reference has been uh, automatically populated by stash to refer this deployment. And those information are populated from the annotation. Finally, if we check the repository. Okay, so here we can see the variable now has been reserved with different information. Now it has been reserved by the customer two information. So namespace has been resolved by customer two, workload kind has been resolved by deployments and workload name has been resolved by deployment name itself. Okay, go back to the original terminal. So we can see the, our customer one backup has succeeded. Another backup is started. We can see it has now six snapshots in the repository. Uh, actually, there is three pods of a stateful set. So each pod will take backup. And we have we are taking backup of two different directories, source data one and source data two. So each pod will take two backups. So for one session, there will be six backups, six, six snapshots. Customer two has also started its backup. Give it a few seconds. So customer two backup succeeded. We can see uh, it has two snapshot in the repository because uh, this is a deployment and deployment, only one part of deployment will take backup. This part is elected by leader election. Since we are taking two directory, here we're taking backup of two directories, source data one and source data two. So in each backup session, we'll see two snapshot. Okay, let's go back to this bucket. If we reload it, We can see now a new directory has been created. So two subdirectory has been created, one for customer one and one for customer two. If you go to customer one, we can see there is another directory called stateful set. Customer one has a stateful set called demo, demo STS. So its backup data is here. This is actually encrypted data, so it will not make sense until we decrypt it. If we go back to 
customer two. So customer two, we can see now a deployment has been a deployment subdirectory has been created, and here demo deploy. Similarly, the demo deployment data backup data is here. So you can see that uh, you can easily configure backup for multiple workload with a single template. Now let's go back to the slide. Okay. So when should you use and when should not use the auto backup? Mm. Uh, uh, we have seen the demo that it is very tempting because with only a single snapshot, a single template, we can back up all kind of different workloads. So it is very, very tempting. So when shouldn't you use that? Okay. If you want a fine grain control on the backup, then you should not use this auto backup because in a comp template, you can only provide some common, some common configuration. So your, some of your workload may need different configuration. For example, uh, here I have uh, specified a schedule, a common schedule for all workload. Now I have a different type of uh, workload. I mean, I have something one set that I want to take backup on a different schedule. I have some low priority workload that I can back up uh, once a day, and I have some high priority workload that I should back up in every hour of every hour. So in that case, we should not use this common template to back up all of this workload. Instead, we can create separate template for separate types of workload, or we can use individual configuration, backup configuration for individual workload. Okay, then for complex workloads, you should not use auto backup. By complex workload, we are referring uh, a workload where, for example, uh, you want to deploy a WordPress in Kubernetes. So you need a deployment, WordPress deployment, and you need a another deployment for database. So your complete application actually consists of two different workload. One is database and another is your deployment, workload, de WordPress deployment. So you cannot actually create a uh, common template to backup both workload and database. You can actually create two different uh, template one for your WordPress backup, another is for your uh, uh, database backup. But actually this is not uh, a uh, great backup model because you are using two different configuration to backup two different parts of your workload. Instead, you should be able to use a single configuration to backup your both of these database and your deployment. It has also support this use case by introducing backup batch. If you, if you go to our website and go to this batch backup section, you will see you can actually uh, use a single batch backup CR to take backup of different thing. Here I have seen a, a backup a database, a workload and job. Uh, if you go to this concept, backup configuration, and here you can see uh, in a single backup, uh, mm, sorry, backup batch. So in a single backup batch here, you can specify a database. This is a database, MySQL database. And you can also specify your deployment. So this backup will done under a single configuration. So these types of uh, use case 
in this type of use case you should not use auto backup uh, if you still have any question you can read our documentation uh, you can go this directory and this auto backup directory this this explain how this auto backup work and this give a some example how to backup your deployment state full set demo set with a single configuration and there is a another doc that explain how to backup different pvc using single configuration here we have show backup of two different pvc then you can see another doc here we can see a multiple postgres database backup of multiple postgres database single using single configuration uh you can join our slack channel and ask our ask question there we'll try to answer as soon as possible then you can file an issue in our github repository this is github dot github dot com stash stash so you can file issue it I have so I hope most of the question has been answered. Uh, I think this will give you an idea how to go with auto backup. Now next thing for you to do uh, try it at yourself and check if everything is working. If not, then uh, raise an issue or ask our, our question ask us question we'll try to resolve as soon as possible uh, also if you uh, think the current feature or auto backup are not are not satisfying all of your use cases then you can file and feature request we'll try to support your use case thank you have a nice day.